Hey, welcome to GigVolt. This is part two of our series on how to use the lab equipment at Conestoga College. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is covering how to use the cursors on the oscilloscope to read the amplitude of a waveform. So, uh, we've got our signal generator here, which you can use basically by selecting the frequency and amplitude and then choosing a waveform to, to recreate and then just hitting output to start the output. Alright, so we have our waveform here and as you can see it's kind of small so what we want to do is we want to make, make this measurement as accurate as possible so we want to try and use the full scale of the display on the oscilloscope. To do that we're going to use the scale button here for vertical and we're going to just turn it to the right which is clockwise to get it to 5 volts per division. You can see that's what this down here means. So that means for each one of these squares that are created by the dotted lines, that's equal to 5 volts in the vertical up-down direction. So from this, we can see that we're getting what is, according to the scope at least, approximately equal to um, 15 volts down here. So why does it say 15 volts here when we're actually putting in 1.5 volts? All right. Well, the answer is, as you can see here, the channel 1 is set to 10 times, but our probe down below here is set to 1 times. So by, if we change the probe readout here from 1 times to 10 times, let me just correct that. So I'm just going to get the transition there. There we go. So now, to get this correct and accurate, we're going to zoom back in, and there we go. We're now at 500 millivolts per division, and we have the exact same waveform we had before, but now our units are correct. So now, to measure with the cursors, we're going to hit cursor. We're going to hit it again to turn it on. And if we type X and Y, we want uh, Y, I believe. And we're going to change that to channel 1. And that's great. Just turn that off. And now we can actually move these with the adjustment right here. And the scope has conveniently placed these right on the edges of the waveforms. So we have to look very closely. And yeah, I think that's about right. And we can actually hit this, I believe, yep, to move to the other one down here below. And we can just move that and that is pretty much bang on right there. So it looks like we've got a peak to peak of about 3.04 volts. Um, and that's pretty accurate considering that we're firing in 3.0 uh, volts peak to peak here from the signal generator and a little bit of variations, okay. This isn't a perfect system. Okay, now we're going to do the finding the period of the waveform using the cursors. This is a little more tricky because it requires a bit more thinking. First of all, we're going to change the cursors over to the x-axis. Then we're going to uh, move down to cursor A. okay? And we're going to move that. That's the white one here. So we're just going to pick a spot on the waveform. Now we can pick either the bottom uh, trough, the uh, center axis uh, intercept here, or the peak. So I'm just going to go with the peak here because I can see two peaks quite easily. And what we want to do is we want to measure one full cycle. So that could be from here to the next time it crosses in the positive direction, which would be here. Or it can be this peak to this peak, which is what I'm going to measure. So I'm just going to move it right here. And that's about right. Now I'm just going to go to the second cursor here. And I'm just going to bring that all the way over from off of the screen over here and you can see the positions here listed on the display and you're going to notice that they're both negative and that's because they're to the left of the center of our waveform so I'll just get that there that's it so what I would do is I would take this and I would subtract um, the 800 microseconds from the 1. 
0.82 milliseconds, which would give me 1.02 milliseconds, which uh, the 0.02 is likely a rounding error um, because the scope isn't all that sensitive. Um, to improve the accuracy of this, what we could actually do is measure several waveforms and then divide by the number of waveforms we're measuring. So what we can do is go out here, that's two, and then that's three. And the trouble is here I can't see where I'm actually measuring, which is why it's going to be better to use the uh, intercept. So I'm going to use the falling um, center line intercept here. So I'm just going to move that over there because I can see one here and I can see one here. And that's going to let me me measure the maximum number of waveforms on the screen. So there's that. Now we just go back to cursor A, move that over here, and we've got one, two, three, four waveforms. And we've got a total distance. Here we're going to actually be adding one to the other because we're on both sides of the axis here. Okay, just one thing to note, I was saying waveforms earlier. Uh, just a small, small correction here, I meant wavelengths. Um, basically each cycle here is one wavelength of this sine wave that we're looking at. Uh, so right here we have uh, four uh, full wavelengths and we're going to divide the uh, period by four uh, to actually get an average uh, measurement here. And there's another method that we'll cover next on how to do this. So we're looking at about four uh, 0 0.02 milliseconds uh, and we divide that out we get an average of one millisecond per cycle uh, which is perfect because this if I turn this on we can see it's a one kilohertz wave so we know we can confirm that we're doing this right and now for the other method that we can use we can actually take the horizontal scale here zoom in on a single waveform and I think that's a little too tight. So there we go. And now we can actually move our cursors to a single similar spot, which is probably the rising uh, x intercept here. And by zooming in, we get a higher resolution, which allows us to measure more accurately. So here we can see that we have exactly one millisecond. There's no rounding error on the scope because uh, we're zoomed in closer. And both ways are right. Um, your instructor might prefer one way over the other, um, but both will give you accurate results if you uh, do it correctly. So when in doubt, um, use your brain. And remember that uh, one over the uh, period is equal to the frequency.